Hey guys, so today I thought I'd do a video discussing the potential risk of occupational exposure to fentanyl leading to an overdose. I wasn't planning on doing a video on this because I live in Australia and this is literally not a conversation that we're having at all here. But in the United States, I understand that the discussion, especially amongst law enforcement officers about the potential risks of environmental exposure or aerosolized exposure to fentanyl leading to a life-threatening overdose is a very real topic. The following a post that I made on Instagram recently on the topic of a recent case, uh, there was a bit more discussion uh, on our, both sides of the arguments than I was expecting. So I thought, why not do a video about it and make some more discussion, bring up some literature, some statistics, talk about fentanyl and get a discussion going, hopefully in the comments and learning a little bit more about it from people who know a lot more about it in the United States. In the pre-hospital field where I work, fentanyl is mainly used for analgesia for traumatic injuries. Several fentanyl analogs exist, such as carfentanyl, which is traditionally used in veterinary practice for sedation. Following media exposure and some media releases by law enforcement agencies in the US, there has been an understandable fear associated with occupational or environmental inhaled fentanyl exposure. Some medical experts are not sure this is for real. It's dramatic body cam video of a deputy sheriff collapsing to the ground. And interesting to note is that in all of the instances involving law enforcement officers where they've either passed out or exhibited some signs which have been attributed to opioid overdose, today in the recent years, there's not been one case which has been clinically confirmed by toxicology. As far as I'm aware, I'd love to be corrected if I'm in error here. As I said, I'm not from the US, I'm not very familiar with the topic, but I'm familiar with some of the pathophys and some of the statistics involved with opioid use. So we're going to talk through a few of those and I look forward to your input and discussion in the comments. First source here is from the Northern New England Poison Center. Now, in terms of talking about risk, their statement on risks for inhalation, skin exposure and eye exposure are all minimal. For inhalation, which is what has been attributed to the most recent case of fentanyl exposure by a law enforcement officer, uh, even in circumstances involving manufacturing of fentanyl and analogs, so that's like constant exposure to a high concentration of fentanyl, and nearly 200 minutes of exposure is required to reach a starting dose of fentanyl. It is extremely unlikely a significant overdose would occur in a first responder. Now, of course, carfentanil is, let's say, 100 times as potent as fentanyl is. So 200 divided by 100 is two minutes. So this officer would have had to have constant exposure to a high concentration of inhaled carfentanil for two minutes in order to exhibit an overdose. Ocular exposure to fentanyl, of course, is very unlikely, uh, but it does have a higher uptake because of the vascularity and the mucus. Uh, covering there, making drugs more absorbable through that surface. Moving on to a position by the American College of Medical Toxicology and the American Academy of Clinical Toxicology. Uh, this is actually published a few years ago in Clinical Toxicology uh, in 2018. Now, their statement is very simple. They state, to date, we have not seen reports of emergency responders developing signs or symptoms consistent with opioid toxicity from incidental contact with opioids. Incidental dermal absorption is also unlikely to cause opioid toxicity. In exceptional cases where there are drug particles or droplets suspended in the air, uh, N95 respirator provides sufficient protection. Um, workers who encounter fentanyl or fentanyl analogs should be trained to recognize the signs and symptoms of opioid intoxication. And that's something which is really important because the recent cases do involve officers which are exhibiting signs which are not consistent with opioid overdose. So what kind of symptoms are associated with an opioid overdose? An easy mnemonic is CPR3H. So that stands for coma, pupil constriction, respiratory depression, hypotension, hypothermia, and hyporeflexia. Another interesting study published just last year on the topic, uh, it's called Can't Touch This Training to Correct Police Officer Beliefs About Fentanyl Overdose from Incidental Contact. Uh, they provided an interventional course to provide education to law enforcement officers about their beliefs and about the perspectives and understanding of fentanyl. They provided a statement, first responders who encounter fentanyl are at great risk of overdose by touching it or inhaling it. At baseline, 80% of the participants agreed with the statement. After the educational course, only half is 40% agreed with that statement. It was interesting to note that most of the people that disagreed were officers without a college degree. So they weren't acquainted with evidence-based practice or they were involved with active patrol, uh, of course, making them more fearful of this eventuation. Guys, in conclusion, I think it is very highly unlikely to receive an opioid overdose by incidental exposure for a few seconds to a potentially vaporized or powdered uh, substance. In these cases, I believe we're seeing a psychosomatic response to a very high perceived threat and fear based on past misinformation. This is because their signs and symptoms were not consistent with opioid overdose. 
and there was no clinical confirmation at hospital. I'm interested to hear what you guys believe about this topic. Let me know in the comments and I look forward to reading them.